the Turtle Tracks podcast. I'm your host, Brian Van Hooker, and I'm here with artist John Somariva, who's worked on a number of Ninja Turtles projects, as well as just for just about every major comic book company out there. Uh, how you doing today, John? I'm doing good, mate. Very well. <laughs> John's been super patient. That was like my ninth intro. So. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> John's in Australia and I'm in New York, so it's uh he it's very end of his day and the uh, very beginning of mine. Uh, so if we're both a little tired, we forget right <laughs> Friday, <laughs> especially me. Uh, look, I, I, as a as a dad to a four year old, um, sleep goes out the window. You know, I, I, I haven't known sleep for the last four years, so um, this is pretty pretty much how I feel all the time. <laughs> I understand. I I the reason why I'm a little bit groggy because I always wake up early is because. I was watching Trolls World Tour with my five-year-old until about uh, last night. So, great, great, yeah. <laughs> five-year-old daughter. So I completely feel you. So, <laughs> yeah. Hey, look, it's uh, it's it's part of it, and it's all good in good fun, isn't it? You know. Yeah, it is. <laughs> so I guess to, uh, to get started, I wanted to ask you uh, how you got started. Uh, how like what? When did you start drawing? Yeah, well, look, uh, honestly, I've been drawing my whole life as far back as I can remember. You know, um, there are drawings that I've, that, that I've still got in my possession from when I was four and five and six years old where I was drawing um, Star Wars. And I think I, I, think I was uh, slightly traumatized by watching Jaws at the drive-in when I was a kid. I think my parents probably thought I wasn't old enough to remember what I saw, but I was, you know, drawing... Um, bits of body parts floating through the water and that sort of thing as a, as a little kid. So <laughs> I obviously remember those scenes quite well and very vividly, but um, yeah, look, uh, just always drew. And then uh, as I, as I got a little older in primary school, um, I, I think I was around 12 years old and I distinctly remember my parents saying to me, um, maybe this is what you should do in life. Like it seems like you really enjoy drawing and, and um, I kind of thought about it for a minute because uh, up until that point, I thought I was going to be a pilot. Like uh, I wanted to fly planes. Okay. And then I realized, yeah, I really do like drawing. And then I literally don't even have to worry about studying at school anymore. Like I can just practice drawing and get really good at it, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which isn't re very good advice to give anybody. But yeah. Um, <laughs> I had that. I definitely had that thought in my head. Now that doesn't mean I slacked off at school, okay? But <laughs> I did. Um, I did have that thought in my mind, and and you know, I'm just very lucky that it worked out. I guess you know, it's become my job, and here we are. <laughs> Any? Uh, have you ever uh, flown a plane anyway? Like, have you ever like taken lessons or anything? No way. The 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 most I've flown is um, I don't know, like Blazing Angels on your PlayStation. <laughs> That's about it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't think they should let me anywhere near a control stick on an airplane. <laughs> <laughs> so let me ask you, how did you, uh, I mean, how, uh, how did you first find yourself getting published? Like, how did you manage to uh, break in? And is it harder to do from Australia? Because, uh, you know, the conventions are such a huge part of that. I'm curious. Mm. Yeah, look, certainly in, in um, being from Australia at the time when I broke in, it was uh, much more difficult because you had to physically send uh, samples of your artwork to the publishers, which is over in the States. So it was all done through snail mail and all that sort of thing. And, and uh, the internet and email was this thing that was sort of just coming to light, you know, becoming a thing. And so I'm actually of that first generation of artists that broke in through the internet because, um, to be honest, I, I just didn't actually have the confidence to send my artwork to these publishers. I... I, I thought I just wasn't good enough. I wasn't ready. So I, I was still honing my skills and practicing. But meanwhile, I was actually putting my artwork on the internet and showing it to people and putting it on different websites. And the right people happened to see that art and they thought I was ready. You know, they, they, they're the ones that had the power to give people jobs. Um, so in particular, it was a, a writer who was working for Image Comics and he had his own comic book at the time. Uh, his name's Jay Ferber. Okay. And he just sent me an email out of the blue saying, um, you know, I work, I'm a writer. I, I've got a book out through Image Comics. Would you be interested in doing a backup story in it? And, you know, this absolutely blew my mind. I mean, I, I probably didn't sleep for a week just off the buzz of that because my dream was coming true right there. You know, this is what I was striving for for, for a good 10 years, you know, just around that sort of time frame. 
Um, my dream was to become a comic book artist and that was my goal. And now the opportunity was there to, you know, that first little door cracked open for me right then and there. And uh, it was, I mean, it was just such a exciting time for me because, um, you know, I was about to realize that, <laughs> that passion, I guess, you know? Oh yeah. And uh, how, how did you, uh, how long, uh, what was that? I'm sorry. What was that book? So, so the book was called Noble Causes. Okay. Um, and I think, uh, it was a, a sub series of the actual book called Family Secrets, or maybe that was just the chapter that he was up to at the time. Okay. And so I, th I think I did uh, six pages or something like that in the back of it. And, and I mean, it was my first job in comics. I had no idea uh, what sort of paper I was supposed to use. I didn't know what size I was supposed to draw out. You know, I, I just winged it totally. Just go, okay, I'm going to draw a comic now and, and just went for it. And um, yeah, it, look, it, it's the kind of... I, I, you know, I say that I just winged it and all that, but I, I had been drawing my own comics and and uh, coming up with my own stories and my own ideas, or or I would draw, for example, uh, Mario versus Sonic comics. And in fact, I even drew my own little Ninja Turtle comics oh, back cool. in the day. You know, when, as a twelve year old, you know, and and, and all of this um, is it's it's kind of like a skill that um, I guess you could be taught in a school, but I was just. I was self-taught. I was just learning it because it was what I was interested in. Yeah. And uh, so naturally, I, I kind of had that thing of wanting to be a, a storyteller and tell stories through my artwork. So when the time came to do it professionally, um, it wasn't it wasn't that difficult because I'd already done so much training, I suppose, to get to that point. Now, the work was still very rough and raw and green at the time, you know, so <laughs> it, uh, it, it, it probably took me five to ten years from that point to really uh, get to a place where I was very comfortable with my own art and my own style and, um, you know, really having that confidence in my own work to, you, you, you get to a point where, uh, I don't know, maybe the artists that listen to your show can relate to this, but, um, you know, you'll be drawing and, and maybe you get into a slump, what you call a slump, or it's like artist block. And it might take you a month to get over that before you go and pick up a pencil again and start drawing again. And the better you get at it, the more you practice and the more that, um, you know, drawing anatomy and these things become second nature, you you start to, um, those those little gaps of artist block just become less and less each time. So, you know, next time it takes two weeks and then you, you just start drawing again and then in one week and then, you know, you whittle it down until it becomes zero. There's no time anymore for artist block. You know, you just, every day you get up and you just got to work on a new page and um, that's what we call, you know, getting into the groove. So it's <laughs> awesome. know, just getting to this rhythm where the art's just constantly flowing and flowing and flowing and, and it is, I mean, it's, it's a Zen like monk state to get into, which I, I love to be in that mood, you know, it's a, it's a good place to be. Now, after having worked for Image, how did you find your way to uh, IDW? Um, okay, so, yeah, the, so, so with those first pages that I did for Jay, uh, for the Noble Causes book, uh, from there I showed them around at um, uh, Chicago Wizard World back in 2002, I believe it was, around that, that sort of time period. And... Um, you know, the, uh, I showed it to various different companies and they all seemed to react quite positive, positively to what I was doing. Um, I, I ended up hooking up with, um, with a, a few other guys that were sort of around my age and we sort of had similar styles. You know, we were, we were into the funky hip hop and graffiti and, you know, cartoony kind of a look, which was quite different to what we'd seen traditionally in comics. And we banded together and formed our studio. So our studio was called Lead Heavy, and um, it was kind of this thing where we really, you know, as a as a as a, a group, we got a lot more attention, and we started gaining a lot of followers. Um, now, some some of the guys that were in that group, they're pretty big names today in comics. You know, they're guys that have all really graduated, and and um, they're you know they've made a name for themselves. Um, I don't want to be a name dropper, so you know, hey. Yeah, go for it, please. <laughs> go for it. So, go. I mean, these, these guys, these guys are my friends and my peers, and you know, we I still regard them very fondly to this day. So, um, you know, guys like Scotty Young, uh, Mark Brooks, um, you know, Kyrie Randolph. These these are all guys that have worked. Um, 
in comics ever since those those days when we were young whippersnappers, you know, coming up. <laughs> um, Sean Galloway is another guy who's done a lot of animated stuff, and Greg Titus who does you know this great uh, packaging art for Star Wars and all this sort of stuff. But anyway, so uh, we we all banded together, we formed this group, and um, at, at a certain point, Dark Horse Comics wanted to kind of create a new label which was going to be geared towards sort of younger audiences and, and um, you know, they, they, they were trying to branch out into something a little bit different. And, and so they came to us to basically kick off this whole new line of comics. Oh, wow. um, so a, as things worked out, my title ended up being the flagship um, title for this, this new line that they created called the rocket comics, they were called. And um so the book that I worked on was Go Boy Seven. You know, I, I did that for for I think eight issues or seven issues or something like that. Now this is really rough work. I don't want anybody going out there and looking for this stuff. <laughs> 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 I mean, you can if you want if you want to see the, the the journey, but please don't judge me on that artwork. And it was very <laughs> rough, and that's just me learning on the page right there. You know, uh, and then so from there. Um, you know, I did I did the stint at Dark Horse, and I took a little break. I, I sort of went off and did a bit of animation and games work, and you know, kind of got out of comics a little bit until about around 2010, where I got back into it after a, a San Diego Comic Con visit, where I met a, an editor from Wildstorm Comics at the time, which was this is sort of when they were um, just transitioning into being owned by DC Comics, and they offered me a job with them, and um, so from there. Uh, I did I did a job called Free Realms. Then I went into more of a creator owned again called Rexodus, and from there um, was I'd, I'd started putting more of my Ninja Turtle artwork online. So I, I, I grew up as a fan of the turtles. You know, as a kid, I used to watch the cartoon. I, I used to sit there for hours and hours watching, um, uh, you know, people playing the arcade game. In especially that was, I just loved that game. I thought it was amazing. Oh yeah, um, for sure. Yeah, I'd, I'd sit there wishing I had my 60 cents, which it cost back in the day. You know, we had three, you'd, you'd use three 20 cent coins here in Australia. Okay. And that was, that that equaled one credit, or you could put a dollar in and you get two credits. <laughs> God, you lose and, so much uh, money in those things. I grew up, uh, Turtles in Time was my favorite growing up. Right. I, I, I can't tell you how much money I put away on it. I actually own the machine now. You do? Oh, man. I loved awesome. it so much I needed to own it. Um, yeah, right. Even, but, but, uh, yeah. Oh, sweet. <laughs> but, uh, I, I need, I, it, I can't tell you how much money I, I spent on, on those two games growing up. Right. So it's, it, yeah, yeah. Simpsons game. The Simpsons yeah. game was another big one for me. Oh, uh, yeah. I remember that one too. Yeah. We used oh, to have that at our, at our bowling alley. Uh, and they, they were all the Konami beat em up games. You know, they all yeah. had a, a similar engine, I suppose, that ran them all. But the oh, Turtles sorry. one was sort of the first one. But they, I mean, they just captured the essence of the cartoon perfectly in this mm -hmm. game. And, the graphics were great at the time, you know, and 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 just the I just remember the sound effects and um yeah, it just really it really built on that passion that I had for the turtles, you know, from that time, just going from the cartoon series into the game and did something to me where it made me want to go home and just draw them all the time, you know. And cool. and so um uh I think it was around two thousand and and seven, perhaps, when the trailer came out for the 3D animated uh, movie that they were going to do for the turtles. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. and, and and that just it rekindled my fire for the turtles again, and and so I I just love the style of them, the way that they were done in that cartoon. So it made me go and and start drawing them now as an adult and a professional comic book artist. How would I handle them? And so I put this artwork online and just shared it around. You know, it it, it wasn't for a job or anything like that. It was just something that I did for myself. And um, I noticed that people reacted very strongly to my Ninja Turtles art. They kind of liked the the style that I was drawing them in. And um, I think the I mean at this point I'm speculating, but I believe that somebody at IDW saw those drawings that were online and got in touch with me and asked me um, basically to do my first Turtles related job for IDW, which was. Um, it was a a group of sketch covers they wanted to do. So they have um they got like this boutique sort of side website where they sell original artwork and you know sort of rarer pieces and things like that. 
and they asked me to contribute to this. So I, I, I think I, I think I did about fifteen um, sketch covers, so original drawings of the turtles. I drew them nicely with markers, all that sort of thing. Yeah. I mean, I really wanted to show what I could do with these characters. Um, so I used it as an opportunity, almost like an audition of sorts. So I really put sure. the best quality that I could into these drawings. And um, anyway, they they put them up for sale when the day came. I was, you know, online refreshing the page, trying to because I, I wanted to kind of see, you know, how much are these things going to sell for and all that sort of thing. And I never saw them pop up on the website. I'm like, what's going on? Like they told me today was the day they were supposed to go up there. So I, I emailed the the editor. Um, who I did the job for, and I said, you know, what happened to these covers? And um, he wrote back to me immediately and said um, they actually sold out within four minutes. They just went straight away. <laughs> oh, wow, that's awesome. That's so yeah, cool. And, and so I, I thought, oh, yes, that's great. Uh, and then I, you know, because you're, you're, you're always worried about these things as an artist. You're like, you know, are people actually going to, sure. who wants to spend money on my, you know, little scribbles that I do on paper, you know, right. that's the, the, the way that you sort of think about it. And um, so that was very, you know, gratifying to me. And and uh, and I, I thought, okay, how can I springboard from this now? Because I, I would love to draw the Ninja Tours. I would love to draw them officially and get onto the actual comic books. That's one of my goals. And um, so I, I, I said to the guy, well, you know, if I do more sketch covers in the future, wouldn't it be better if I was actually a published Ninja Turtles artist? You know, we could do a little better then. And I, uh, I think he passed that note on to the Bobby Kerno, who is the editor of the Ninja Turtles comic books. And, um, you know, he reached out to me and they asked me to do my first cover for, for the, the uh, animated book, which was the TMNT new animated adventures, something like that. And uh, that's where I did my, my very first um official cover for idw that had to be approved you know through nickelodeon and that whole process and uh hey look again you know a nice little check mark there and and it, it blossomed into um what has been a pretty you know significant part of my career from that time onwards has been working you know with the ninja turtles and and getting to draw those characters let me ask you, uh, you know, Ninja Turtles, I, I love to ask this of artists because I'm always curious about it, is, you know, it's a property that's been done by hundreds of different artists. So when it, like, you know, wh when it came time for you to, like, as an adult approach, how do I draw these guys in my style? Like, how do you find that what, and still make it distinct? Because I can tell your artwork, but how do you still mm -hmm. it distinct from all the others that have come? Yeah. Well, look, uh you don't it, with with these things it's something that it uh, you really shouldn't overthink it i guess so for me i i just drew what looked cool to me basically and and so i uh, with when i was drawing my own version of the turtles it was quite um pretty wild you know the style it was very out of control there was no there was no discipline there you know it's just I, w I was just drawing really skinny necks and big fat arms and big thick <laughs> legs and that kind of thing you know and and i I was just uh, just having fun with it, really, because there's no rules there. Now, um, later on, when I got my first official job, so this first cover that I'm talking about, which was the cover for TMNT New Animated Adventures number nine, um, it's uh, when when you're when 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 you're going through the process of approvals with Nickelodeon, um, things change a little bit because. This is now their brand. They spent a lot of money on this brand, sure. and they they need it to look a certain way. Especially because now I'm drawing something that's based on an actual TV show that needs to be recognizable. Yeah. So the way the way that I approach these things is my task is to um, have as much fun as possible with it. So in other words, I'm going to draw it in a way that I really like to see the way that it's drawn. I like to you know I want to enjoy that piece of art. But I also need to make sure that they're happy with what they're getting. And so the, the trick there was to find a style that was going to work, um, which was recognizable as the cartoon series, but also that had my little whatever it is that makes my art look the way it does, you know. And so um, what I basically discovered was that the secret was to really just make the faces and the heads as close as possible to the animated series. So I was literally referencing them and looking at them and 
trying to draw that as close as possible as I could within my style. And then with the bodies, I was doing whatever I wanted, you know, and, oh, okay. and, um, and putting, uh, like, you know, making sure that all the details were correct and all that sort of thing. And that worked. I mean, look, uh, it took, it probably took a, a couple of goes back and forth, you know, where the, the, I think the first take I drew was completely on another planet. Like I, <laughs> I was going for like a Zelda wind waker kind of a style, Okay, <laughs> you know, so it still looked cute, but it was very, um, very blocky and strange sort of looking. And then, uh, I got some notes, you know, the, the heads don't look right. And, so I went away and and I, and I just thought, okay, I'm gonna make it really look like the cartoon now, and uh, it it just seemed to work. It all popped into place. My you know the dynamics of my um, composition, you know the things that I do that that, that, are, that I try and have this um, something more kinetic, you know, and, and energetic about my work that that kind of thing, and uh, that was all present in that piece of artwork and. They reacted very well uh, to the point where, you know, I got asked to come back and do another cover later on. And then, uh, of course, that springboarded into a gig being the regular cover artist for for that series. So um, not trying to toot my own trumpet here, but, I, you know, it's a, <laughs> no, it's, a, it, it, it's obviously really cool to be able to do that when when it's your goal and you achieve, um, you know, you achieve these things. It's It's a great thing, I guess. Were you a fan of the 2012 series? Like, were you familiar with it when you started drawing it? Mm, uh, honestly, so I was probably in the same boat as everybody else of of uh, my generation when I saw those designs for the first time, and I'm going, "What have they done? What are they doing here? Like, you know, they've got <laughs> they got three toes. This is all wrong. Like, they're all different shapes and sizes, and <laughs> you know, all this kind of stuff." And and um. You know, just looking when you look at three D models, sometimes you just look at them and they don't. Sometimes they're lacking a little bit. It's not as cool as a exaggerated two D drawing. You know, it's this kind of stiff looking kind of model. Yeah. But when you see those characters in motion and and the acting that they put into them and all that, you know, it's a whole different ballpark now. You know, and so I think uh, I think after seeing the little trailer, they did this sort of trailer where the turtles were kind of running along the rooftops or something like that, or maybe it was the intro of the the series. And um, you know, I, obviously, once I got this job, I started watching the series and getting into it. And I mean, immediately I realized, okay, I see what these guys are doing. They really know their stuff. Oh yeah, they're drawing from all of the different iterations of the turtles that have come before. Because they've got elements from the comic books here, they've got elements from the previous uh, cartoon show, yeah. and and it's really everything that um, you know they boil down the essence of what it is that we've loved about all all the turtles from the beginning, and and just put it into this show. And really, honestly, like when you go back and watch the '80s cartoon show that I grew up on, that I loved, um, I mean, 2012 is head and shoulders above it you know, way, way, way beyond it. In my opinion, sure. it's, yeah. it's, uh, it doesn't have the cheesiness and kiddiness, which is very charming and endearing for the 80s series, but to hold up in today's yeah. day, you know, I think 2012 is, is uh, just a much better show in that sort of a way. So look, uh, that's all just to say it really grew on me and I, and I ended up you. really loving it, you know? <laughs> and one thing I one thing I love about it, and this is kind of leans into your artwork a bit, is that show is it has the dramatic elements that it needs at times, but it's also there's a lot of episodes that are just fun to watch. Like it's just mm -hmm. a fun, silly show. And I think like I think too often, maybe I'm wrong, but I think a lot of times uh, the diehard fans are like you know want more of the serious. We want the gritty turtles, and they're like I don't know, I like that silly shit too. Like I. <laughs> I mean, like I, 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 the old cartoon was crazy, like this crazy, silly show in a lot of ways. Mm. Um, and there's so much about that 2012 series that is just goofy, and I love it for that. Like, yeah, the Michael, like I, I, I'm a Donatello fan. I've always been a Donatello guy, but I think if I grew up on this show, I might be a Michelangelo guy because my, the Michelangelo <laughs> is my favorite. The pizza face oh, yeah. episode. Um, him with Mondo Gecko. That first episode with Mondo Gecko is maybe my favorite episode of the whole series. It's just so right. fun stuff from that. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, that, and that one's particularly cool because they've used the you know original voice of Mikey. Yeah. Uh, for Mondo yeah. Gecko, so you know, it's a, it's a cool little throwback for 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 the fans of the old show as well. Um, look, one thing about so so 2012, you know, it was definitely aimed towards a younger audience, but 
um, you know, uh, the action was as good as you're going to see in, in any Turtles, really. You know, I mean, Leonardo swinging those katanas and chopping those robots up, you know, with the best of them. So oh, yeah. it's um, all, all of that, I think, is, you know, as cool as it's really going to get. I, um, yeah, I, 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 I would love to see a gritty animated movie or something that does have that, that more hardcore kind of edge about it. But with something that's not the purpose of a show like the 2012 one yeah. where I, I, I believe they achieved their goals and then some, you know, they did a, a great job with it. Um, and the proof to me is, is that I'd be at conventions, um, you know, as you do, I'm sitting there at my table and a father would come up with his young kid. And this father grew up with the Ninja Turtles, loving them and watching the cartoon show as a, as, as a young kid. And now they are sharing that with their child and their yeah. child is just as into the Turtles as we were. So they have successfully bridged that gap between the generations. And uh, to create something that, that uh, a parent can bond with over with their, their child is how cool is that you know like awesome, yeah. you don't see that every day you know it's I mean, we, we, my, kid, my, my daughter is super into turtles she's and i i don't think she had a choice in the matter but she's been into <laughs> i don't know is your kid love turtles too uh he he definitely likes them i'm i'm still it's funny because um he he, he still gets confused a little bit between the I, I test him all the time like which one's this one which one's that one you know <laughs> sure and we go through the turtles um he's not a he's not a hardcore fan but he you know he likes them he definitely likes them and i i think he'll i think it'll grow on him a lot more once we you know sit down and enjoy a little bit more turtle stuff together we just uh we haven't quite got to that point yet in defense of the uh, the original cartoon, because I've been rewatching a lot of that lately with my daughter, uh, there mm -hmm. is an element of it. Like I think the stories are fine. Like you know, every episode's fairly similar, but like there is uh, some of the joke telling in that show is so sharp. Like it's smarter than it needs to be. Mm. Animated cartoon. So like there's a lot of like breaking the fourth wall and silly stuff. So okay, a layer of that cart of the original cartoon that seems to be built in for parents to just like. Like when they're explaining the plot, they often say, We're doing the exposition now. So there's a cool, like, uh, I see <laughs> weird elements to it that I didn't get when I was a kid. And like, I'm yeah. growing appreciation for now. I think you're right. It's probably, it's not as good as the 2012 cartoon, which is the best, but it's, it's, it's a cool thing to watch to see in a different light as an adult. Yeah. Yeah. And look, and, and to be 100% completely honest, I, it's not like I've gone back and done a deep dive and watched the whole show again. It was, um, you know, I'd probably not seen it for, who knows, close to 15 years or something like that. And I, I was just sitting on the couch one night, late late night, and it sort of came on. And I was like, oh, cool, Ninja Turtles is on. And so I just put it on. Yeah. And uh, and I just remember seeing a scene where Shredder and Krang, they're kind of bickering with each other. And it, it was a bit, of, but it was very playground, you know, young oh, child yeah. sort of, you know, yeah. the way they're going at each other. <laughs> And but then the nature wow, of their relationship uh, is so confused. Like, why? Like, they're just <laughs> angry, pathetic bad guys. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the very, Turtle, very, the Turtle uh, show does a nice job of getting the humor in there and uh, mm. still getting stories that are, you know, worth watching, really. So, mm. but, but, but certainly fleshing the characters out a little bit more and, and making them a little bit more, you know, three dimensional, pardon the pun, but, <laughs> you yeah, know, sure. um, Rather than what we were getting before, where you know it was just your your, your good old eighties bad guy villain that was just a villain for the sake of being a villain. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. But why yeah. Did take over the world? They just I don't know. They never explained that part of it. It's just why. <laughs> and you said the two thousand seven movie. Did that influence you any, or just kind of excited you and got you thinking? Uh, look, it, it got me back into it as as an adult, but um, I. I mean, I, I I still to this day think that one of the scenes in that movie is one of the best scenes of any turtle movie that's ever been created, which is the fight scene between Raph and and Leo in the rain on that rooftop. Um, it's just so well executed, and you know the emotion of it, and oh, yeah. just the the choreography, everything everything about it is what I really truly love about the turtles. I think they I think they did fall a little bit short with the um, you know, I, I didn't love the storyline of having these little cute creatures and aliens and all that sort of thing. It didn't feel 
as TMNT to me as as it would have if they'd had um, some real mutants or, or something like that. You know, I mean, I'm I'm always looking forward to seeing Rocksteady and Bebop, for example. I, oh, I yeah. would have loved to see them in the, the movie, that sort of thing. Um, or Krang, you know, all, all of the the, the rich creatures um, and rogues gallery that TMNT has. I would have preferred probably to see that, but um, not to harp on that. Uh, aside from that, I thought the designs were great. I thought the and I, it, it was a great movie. It had a good look to it. So um, I love the way those turtles look. Like they're they're really sharply stylized and yeah, you know, in a in a similar way, not not the same, but in a similar way that your art is. Like where you, it's a bold choice to represent the turtles this way, and that to me was the most exciting part of that movie. Was like there's really like. Mm different looking turtles and they're mm. a better for it so well I, I think up until that point we'd never really seen them in 3d and, and animated in that sort of yeah. a way with the the you know the realistic lighting and all that kind of thing so really um just added a whole new level of realism to these cartoons that we'd known you know before that time um was that that might have been the first time as well where they sort of made them different body shapes and I think that so. kind of thing. There's only been I don't, I don't think they did that with twenty twelve differences in like the original movie and things like that, but that was the first one where oh, of course, yeah. A, a distinct no I, I even certain things like I, I spoke to Kevin uh Monroe on this podcast about it. And like awesome. those that I didn't notice, but it was so clever in the way the designs like Raphael had eyes that were like closer together like a predator. And mm. Donatello had eyes further apart, like prey. Like there's so many little right, things right. You notice, but it's it the, the the design of those four turtles in that movie is is really something very cool. Like yeah. I, that alone was. I mean, like, I, I like the movie, but like that alone was the to me the most exciting part was that those designs. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. I I um I also really enjoyed that about it, and you know, I I know I know some of the guys that worked on the designs for that thing and and uh, I mean we're talking about some of the greatest character designers out there that are putting that level of thought into the characters so you know there's all these subtle things that are just working together to tell you more of the story just by looking at a, a design you know that's um it's fantastic and I I think they did carry that forward into 2012 as well in fact they probably pushed it even more so you know um again that's something that we've seen now uh happening more in the idw comics as well where um i know i don't know if you're familiar with uh, some of the artists that work in it, but mateo santoluco he's um you know just a brilliant artist who's really put his stamp and, and look on the turtles oh, yeah. like kind yeah. of kind of made a made it a bit of a prototype sort of a look but he kind of brought this thing into it where the masks you know all the, the masks would have a slightly different shape depending on which turtle you're dealing with and um, that was something that I then adapted and made my own a little bit when I you know later on when I got to work on the the um, Batman TMNT so um, yeah again it's just that that philosophy of you know strong characters design which tells part of the story as well as um, looking cool, I guess, oh, <laughs> aesthetically, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, getting into that Batman animated series. So, like, I, I, that was one thing I wanted to ask you. So, you did the Batman Team and T uh, animated crossover, which I think is just as good and in some ways better than the uh, the other one. Because um, I feel like people know about the uh, the main Batman Team and T crossover um, mm -hmm. and later made into a movie. But I really like. I don't. Maybe it's because I'm a huge Bruce Tim fan. But I I love. <laughs> The, uh, the the animated version of that and it's it's a different story so it's 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 something else but yeah. uh, my my question for you is so then you've got your style you're orienting in 2012 now you've got Bruce Tim in the mix like how do you kind of balance all that and make them all like you know what I mean there's a lot of things to think about yeah definitely uh, and 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 again the secret is don't think about it <laughs> okay maybe that's it you know um, I. <laughs> Look, I, I when I when I first got told about the gig, um, I knew that I had to. I, I, I mean, again, growing up on that version of Batman, it was a uh, that to me that's my definitive definitive version of Batman. That's the, that's the version of Batman that I think of when I you know in the the voice of Kevin right. Conroy, all that yeah. kind of stuff. Of course. So so it was very important for me to try and and capture as authentic as possible a look to that because one thing I, I remember as a kid, you know. Um, Anytime I would see a cartoon or a, a drawing or a comic book or a toy or whatever it was, 
that was based on something that I really loved, that I was a fan of, that I was passionate about. And if they got the look wrong, it it just it sucked. You know, it was a bad experience. You would see that and you'd think, why, you know, why couldn't they just work on it a little bit more and get it right? And so I've always made that my goal to become a fan of the thing if I'm not already a fan of it. Or in this case, you know, with Batman, I, I knew that it had to look uh, a certain way for it to for, to pull it off, you know, and 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 the task was to mix that style and that authentic look with what was happening with the Turtles comics at the same time. So, you know, get the two things so it looked like it was part of the same world. Um, and I was very lucky that my because really, really I was trying to draw it as naturally as I could. I definitely did a little bit of homework on uh, Bruce Tim and his style, and you know, I looked up some model sheets and. Um, you know, found all the resources that I could online, watched the, quite a few episodes of the cartoon, obviously, and, um, you know, just took the, the elements of Bruce Timm's art and his style and put it into my work as much as possible to try and capture his look, especially with the, the Batman characters. And uh, just through my own style, that filter of my own style, it just magically happened to work, which I'm very thankful for and very lucky that, you know, I was in that position where, you know, I was, I was the guy that got to have a shot at it and it, and it worked out. So, yeah. Not it, mistaken, it, so your turtles in that series seem a little bit more closer to the 2012 show. Yeah. You, the only difference that I can really think of, of what possibly could have happened there is that I, um, I don't know if you've seen them, but the Revoltech TMNT figures that came out oh, that were yeah. based on the 2012. Yeah, yeah, I got them behind me. Yeah, those are great. probably the best uh, action figures of the turtles that have ever been released. I think. They're I mean, awesome. I haven't seen any any action figures that are better than those ones, but they um, they just captured the style perfectly, and yeah. they, they gave it that little twist. I, I think it's probably a Japanese company that's done it, so it's got that little anime flair about it or something. I'm not oh, sure yeah. what it is, but they they understand their cartoons very well. And so um, I bought a set of those and I just had them on my desk the whole time while I was working on this oh, project. Wow. And I really used them as the the model, you know, for, for my turtles from that point. I mean, they, they were so true to the cartoon, like all the details, all the, the different belts That's and yeah. all stitching, all it's that kind of stuff. Um, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. And so, um, you know, I was probably referring to those a little bit more and, and, and just over time, you know, the more that you draw characters, they start to kind of evolve a little bit and you start sure. to get a bit more comfortable. Um, I mean, you know, that's, that's one of, one of the things is, is, uh, so, you know, Leonardo is probably my favorite turtle and the one that I have always kind of related to the most, but as the series went on and I really started getting into it, Mikey just came out as the clear favorite for me and, and the character yeah. that I enjoyed drawing the most. Um, I just had the most fun with him. The, the, you know, Matt Manning, the, the guy that wrote the script, he really, he gave him all the best jokes and all the best punchlines and everything. And, and, uh, and the physical comedy of Michelangelo is also something that I was really able to sink my teeth into and have a lot of fun with, you know, with the exaggerated sort of style. You can do a lot of really cool, fun things with that. So, um, yeah, Mikey Mikey just went zoop, up to the top spot for me from that point on. <laughs> I, I usually ask this at the end, but is, is who is your favorite turtle? Um, well, yeah, I, I guess the answer is to, for when I'm drawing, it's it's Mikey. and sure. but. But I think, I don't know, I think I think of Leo like if I'm ever playing the computer game, for example, I'll choose Leo. Uh, Leo was the the turtle that was assigned to me as you know I'm a kid that had three brothers, three younger brothers. I was the oldest one. Okay, so, so we each got assigned a turtle, and you know I, I was given the blue bandana one year at Christmas, and that was it. <laughs> <laughs> I feel you. Yeah. Very cool. I, I feel like that was a, I, I've always been a Donnie fan, but like when it came to video games, I always thought Michelangelo for some reason was the most fun to play in the video game. <laughs> Usually, pick them, so. Yeah. Yeah. Look there. I, I don't, it's, it's such a hard question, honestly, when you're, a, when you're a real fan, I mean, I mean, I'm very, very undecisive on that question because there is literally any given day where I could feel like I'm relating more to, you know, each different turtle. And uh, especially when you're drawing them, you know, there was times where um, Donnie was definitely the favorite. I mean, especially in that 2012 style, he's 
kind of a bit more elongated and has the, the, the gap tooth and, you know, he has these really awkward moments, which I could kind of relate to, you know, especially when he's um, trying to chat to Batgirl and this sort of thing, you know, so it's lots of blushing and, you know, embarrassing moments and that kind of thing. And so, uh, you know, I, I could relate to that side of Donnie sometimes. And, um, you know, I, I mean, Raph just has that, awesome cool aggression all the real you know uh, uh, anger and that kind of thing but you can you know that's so much fun to draw because it's 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 always going to lend itself to more energetic poses more sure. kind of angles more foreshortening you know those kind of things which are really fun to um you know it, it goes hand in hand with the turtle so it's the it's such a hard question for me to pinpoint and just put it down to <laughs> yeah. this is my one guy and and um the more you the more you get into them uh, the harder it becomes i believe i don't know maybe i'm just an indecisive guy <laughs> let, let me ask you and we talked about this a little bit before we got started but like your style the energetic style that you have i mean how what is it you, about that you think that has lent itself so well to all ages because it is it the line does seem uh arbitrary at times right because like sophie campbell's stuff is super cute right and like it's awesome, but that works for the more the the headline, uh, a more adult, I guess, mm. ebook. Mm. But like your stuff is, and I've read, I read, I read every comic book, and I love the uh, the animated, the Amazing Adventures, and all those things, and mm -hmm. goofier, stretchier turtles. So I'm curious, like, what do you think it is about your style that lends itself to the all ages thing, or what do you think it is about all ages that it's perceived as being? I don't know. Hmm. I'm just curious about what the difference you think is. Yeah, it's it's really it's actually very difficult for me to um, put my finger on and, and pinpoint that. Um, at the end of the day, I just basically go with the flow and draw mostly what they ask me, you know. And yeah. I, and I'm drawing. I'm um, I'm always drawing for myself. I'm drawing. It, it has to look good to me. I have to enjoy the experience of working on that and really have fun um, to to be able to do a good job. So. Um, there have been examples where early on in my career, I, I took on jobs because it was the only thing that was offered to me at the time. And I would make it a point to really become a fan of whatever that thing was, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, um, through that process and, and truly becoming a fan, never phoning it in, you know, not just doing the job just for the sake of doing the job and taking the paycheck, um, you know, I, I think it lends a, it, it brings a level of authenticity to it. So um, the, the fans will then hopefully react to it in that kind of a way. So really, it's not, it's not a conscious choice. It's not something that I've sat there and said, I'm going to aim my artwork specifically towards all ages or younger kids or anything like that. Um, I think... I think truly what it is, it's uh, people see cartoony art and they relate that to kids. You know, they say I see. That makes sense. cartoons sure. are for kids. So therefore, if it's a cartoony style, it must be for kids. And and there are times where it absolutely baffles me because, um, you know, I can, I can draw uh, gore and violence or, you know, sexy girls just as, as well as anybody else, you know, um, or I mean not as well as anybody else, but you know what I mean? Like uh, I, I can draw those things yeah. and, and, uh, and, and get the desired reaction from <laughs> those drawings, you know? <laughs> and um, I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't be putting those things into that category of, you know, this is, it's obviously not kids material when you get to a certain point. So, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm a, I'm a guy that grew up watching, um, anime and and you know some of these Japanese movies which are certainly geared towards older people as well adults something like Ninja Scroll which has um, you know full on blood gushing out like geysers you know <laughs> when right. somebody gets slashed by a sword and you know some very explicit scenes in there and that sort of thing and um, so I, I I don't I don't see that division to me there's to me it's a it's it's just a made up illusion that seems to happen 
predominantly in American comics, unfortunately, um, because I, I I know the French the French are very open to all styles and cartoony styles work for adult things and all that kind of thing. And Japanese definitely they're on, in the same boat. So um, and I I think uh, I think we're getting there with uh, the I, I consider Australia we're basically. Um, we're in the exact same market as America because the American comic book market is our main comic book market here as well. Gotcha. Um, so you know we, we, we're 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 evolving massively. You know, in the last five to ten years, where you've got Image Comics has now really come out strong with things that aren't comics that aren't just superhero comics. There's comics of all genres and different styles, and um, you know the um <clears throat> more funky loose energetic kind of styles aren't just seen as as uh, being for kids but hey look i'll i'll take it man because you know part yeah. of uh part of this movement is that we are getting new readers and new generations into comic books which is it's a good thing you know it's a it's it's a a beautiful art form that we should never let die and the way to do that is by bringing new lifeblood into it so yeah, look, if it's working, if it's working for the kids, then <laughs> let's do it, you know? Yeah, the, I mean, I think that's one thing, like I said, the, one of the things I love about the Turtles is that it's a fun franchise in a lot of ways. Yeah, there are, there are darker takes on it. But I mean, I think, you know, I, I love the goofy stuff. I really do. And I love the fun and the energy that artists like yourself have put into it. Because, like, I just, it keeps it, it keeps alive and fresh, so... Uh, mm. I, I love that. And I, I, speaking of uh, the stories you worked on, um, I, I covered Batman, but like there's a couple of backup stories that you did uh, for um, Amazing Adventures. I think it was eight and 14. I love those. Yes. The, one is with Mikey and Mondo Gecko, the other one is with Mikey and Renee. And I mm -hmm. love those little stories because not only are they like, those are the ones I'm introducing to my, my kid as, I'm, as she's getting into comic books now in Turtles. Um, but like, it's also like just fun little things about like stupid stories that nobody would waste an episode on or an issue on, but they're <laughs> so much more fun in that like six or eight pages. I love this. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> the, the Mondo Gecko one was, was really a, a very fun challenge as an artist actually, because um, there's no dialogue through that whole thing. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's literally two words. It's, um, uh, you know, we've got Mikey saying uh, Boyashika, I think, the whole time, and then Mondo saying Kawabunga the whole time. And so they're the that's all you read the whole time. So every, the whole story has to be told through the sequential artwork. Sure. Uh, essentially, it was a, si uh, a silent comic. So, um, you know, the script was very well written, and I, I did my best to convey everything as clearly as possible so that, you know, people could read the story, feel the action, all that kind of thing. And, um, yeah, it, it's it was a it was a fun exercise. I really I really enjoyed working on that one and becoming familiar with that character. And uh, and then with the uh, issue fourteen one, it was a um, I thought it was a very fun, clever little script. You know, I, I, I actually wasn't familiar with Renee myself before that. Oh, yeah. Um, she she's a character from the old comics, isn't she? Going yeah, way back, she started way back in the East Mid Lyric series, and she's bounced right. Uh, 2012 show a little bit. I think the 2003, she was in the 2003 show a little bit, but okay. one that's like a very occasional Turtles character. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, they, I think they were quite faithful to her original design in the 2012 show, if I'm not mistaken. Certainly. She had some very similar elements, including the, um, it's kind of like a staff that she has with the little, this is kind of like a demon claw holding up a, one of those, yeah. um, what do you call them? The sand sand time things what are those called uh, uh, sand Jeez. time right <laughs> sand time sand time thing, thing. right i think so well i could think of was days of our lives you know the That's tv show where it's, <laughs> it's got that stupid thing <laughs> in the intro <laughs> but uh yeah an hourglass an hourglass so, yes um, jesus how do we book yeah. <laughs> <laughs> sand time thing yes <laughs> But um, Lord. yeah, they, they were quite faithful to that. And then recently, I, I did a commission for a guy where he asked me to draw Savanti Romero. I think his name is the the demon character. Yeah, who is Renee's Renee's boss. And 
I went back and I'm drawing this character and then I go, there's something really familiar about this staff that he's holding. I think I've drawn this before. And then, of course, I went back and looked at the comic and I go, ah, that's who it is. Okay. And it all, all, kind of all these pieces fell into place in my head. Um, I just, I, what I need to do is really go back and read some of the original uh, sure, Mirage yeah. comics and that, you know, I, I've got a, I've got, I've got a couple of them. I've got quite a few of the, um, the very, like I've read issue one many times in many different editions and, and that's those first four issues. And then, uh, they, they released those color. I don't know if they were watercolor or whatever it was, the, the big volumes. They, they sort of, those are good. The, yeah, the I have books. those. Those are great. I, I would recommend great. like the I, I like the original comic book, but it's, it, I think because it was tough to, for Eastman and Laird to balance everything, uh, it turned into an anthology series for a lot of it. And mm. some of it's good. Some of it's, you know, like it, it's get the IDW big volume collections and just read those. Yep. They tell you what's what you need to know. And it's, it's right. all good. the essentials. <laughs> yeah. 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 And I mean, like there's good stuff in the anthology part of it, but like you go to different worlds, the turtles for one issue, it gets very silly. And then there's really super yeah. weird stuff. So like, it's, it's not bad, but it's, it's not a as a as a as a whole series. It's hard to, I don't know. It's hard. It doesn't hold up as a whole series. Like you have to look at the East Malaria thing as one thing, and then everything else is another thing. So. Mm, okay. Well, um, yeah. So, it, you know, for, for, um, basically, you know, uh, I'm going back to the Renee stuff and and that short story that we did in issue 14. It was, you know, it was a fun fun little concept, a fun little punchline, and that was working with Matt Manning, who ended up being my collaborator on the. Uh, Batman Turtles Adventures series. So it, it was kind of like our first little time working together. And I think we enjoyed each other's work. So it was really cool that we ended up working on the Turtle series in the end. That's awesome. And, you know, all props to Matt because he um, absolutely knocked it out of the park with that script. And I think he really just absolutely, I mean, he captured it perfectly. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a complete love letter to um, both of those cartoon series and, you know, just all the little Easter eggs and all the little bits and pieces that uh, you know, he he called on to um, really do something that was, I think, a lot of fun for the fans of those two cartoon series. You know, there's just no other way to put it. It was, I guess, I, I guess you can call it fan servicey in in that kind of a way, but I prefer to think of it as a really as a love letter and something that was done. Um, by fans for the fans, you know, essentially oh, yeah. that's what it comes down to. I mean, those are two of my favorite cartoons ever are 2012 turtles and the Batman, the animated series. So to come and those licenses seem to fit together. Like I think the turtles, the turtles I grew up with could never meet the Batman I grew up with. They wouldn't fit. <laughs> or, yeah. But like the 2012 turtles seem to fit with Batman pretty well. So. Yeah. 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 Look at, I, I there's a part of me that actually wouldn't mind that challenge to see how it would actually work. But, um, you know, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, it's, it is, it, they, they do have very different voices, I suppose. Oh, you yeah. know, the tone, the tone doesn't quite match up. So, which is why 2012 seemed to definitely work a lot better. I, I never actually watched the 2003 version of the turtles, but, um, you know, I hear a lot of people saying that that would match up quite well with Batman the Animated Series sure, as well. Yeah, for sure, it would. It, it's 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 similarly serious, and uh, it's a good show. It really is. It's not my favorite, mm. but I think I really like two thousand three show, and I think it has the best um, story arcs for a while there. Okay, um, mm. but it I say it lacks the fun. But the, I like the fun stuff, and that show doesn't have as much of that. It doesn't need it because it, that show stands out for what it's doing. But like the silliness that I like in the turtles, and that artists like you can bring into it, I, it doesn't have as much of that. It's more straight, mm. similar to the original comic books, and uh, has a much more serious edge to it. But it's very good. It's, it's certainly worth yeah. it. You know, the last thing I wanted to cover with you, and this is and the whole reason why I brought you on the show at first, is I, I at least at this moment, um, I saw this cover you did for turtles 112 um it's an exclusive cover for shellheads united and it is a uh, this amazing christmas cover of the turtles um <laughs> I, I i immediately ordered it uh from i'm waiting for it to come in from shellheads whenever it's ready i think it's just arrived there so i think it's shipping soon yeah that's right it's this amazing i mean 
if anybody's listening to this, go check out Turtles 112, the, uh, your cover for this thing. It's, it's fantastic. And it's the, the five turtles now, like in an alley, as they're just kind of chilling out, and Eastman and Laird are in the back. Um, <laughs> I mean, how did this come together? Because I can't tell you how much I love. I love, I mean, again, this is sort of the cornball thing I mean, but I love Turtles Christmas stuff. Like, I kind of love that. So, I mean, yeah. come together because I absolutely love it. I can't tell you how much I love yeah. it. Well, look, first of all, um, I love hearing your reaction because uh, as an artist, that's something that we, we, I mean, we get to see that a little bit at conventions when we meet people that are into our work and that kind of thing. But it's always awesome, you know, to, to hear that people have reacted so positively to a piece of artwork because uh, at the end of the day, that's what we want to create is a reaction in somebody. And um, the goal of this cover was really, look, I, I mean, 2020 has not been the best year, we could say. And uh, <laughs> we, we wanted to do something which um, was going to lift people's spirits. You know, it's something in the, the tradition of Christmas. It's that excitement at the end of the year. It makes us all feel like kids again. Um, you know, there should be a lot of joy and, and, and really that feeling of um, spending time with your family, that, all of these kinds of things, which um, that's what really what I was, wanted to represent in this piece of artwork is, is uh, you know, it's the family. It's the total family there, right there, front and center, all together, spending quality time, you know, doing the things that I would do with my brothers, playing a bit of Nintendo, um, you know, uh, sharing presents, all that sort of thing. But then um, it was actually, so Bobby, who um, is the, the the guy running Shellheads United, he had the idea to do this little cameo of um, a, a little Easter egg, you know, Eastman and Laird in the background. And we did a little research and we found, we, we could only find one instance of Eastman himself appearing on a Turtles cover. And oh. we couldn't find anything where where Peter Led had ever appeared on a cover, so we thought this might actually be the first time that the two oh, daddies of the turtles are appearing, you know, on on a on an actual comic book cover. And um, you know, we wanted to have that nice touching moment. They're looking out of the window onto the, the, their kids, you know. And um, so, as far as I know, this is the first time that they have, have both appeared on a on a cover together, and. Now, I, I had a I had a chance to spend a little time with Kevin earlier this year in March. He came out to Australia, and um, we did a little mini convention tour. We went to two different cities. Um, so that was with Freddie Williams as well, who oh, was the other great. guy that yeah, Freddie who, who worked. He's a good friend of mine actually, and uh, we go way back. and And so it was just so awesome for us, being the fans that we are of the Turtles and. Uh, fans of you know, I mean, Kevin Eastman to us is is you know God. What are you? <laughs> you uh, I don't have to tell you guys, you know. So um, and and here I am, all of a sudden, finding myself sharing pizzas and beers with Kevin Eastman, you know, and we're just talking turtles and having a good time. And and in fact, he was uh, at the time he was very sort of in those early stages of uh, the Last Ronin storyline and. He had his sketchbook there and he's working on ideas for the story and the thumbnails and kind of going through it almost like a pitch and telling us what this book is going to be. And um, I mean, these are things that, you know, especially in, in light of what's happened this year where conventions have stopped and we stopped yeah. having that interaction and all that kind of thing. It was just such a special moment to me and something that I'll always remember, you know. And uh, in fact, the first time my son ate, Pizza was with Kevin Eastman. So. What? That's awesome! <laughs> Holy shit! It's a, it's it's not a bad claim to fame. Though, so. That's amazing. Uh, anyway, uh, my point is that um, so uh, you know I, I, I got to chat to Kevin a little bit and and he um, reached out and said how much he really enjoyed this cover and oh, um, cool. that's great. You know we we also heard from from Peter and his wife and you know they said that they were all very touched and found it just you know very. Uh, a nice gesture and all that kind of thing. So it, it was um, just really awesome to uh, um, just get their approval, I guess. Not not that we were looking for that, but it was just um, – it's just the icing on the cake to get that from the guys themselves and, and that we were able to honor them and in that sort of a way. <clears throat> That's so awesome. That's I, didn't, I, I mean, I had no idea about the, getting the feedback too. It's, I mean, I, again, I can't go on it enough. I, it's just so sweet and cool. Uh, <laughs> awesome. You know, the turtles playing chess and just cool. Like I, I like the action covers are great, but I love tur like 
them chilling on the couch. I love simple stuff. Like I love mm-hmm. like, they're, they're more human moments. You know, that's my favorite turtles thing ever is the first uh, movie. And I love it because there's so much of that. That's just sort of like moments that make them feel like real people as opposed mm-hmm. to like just action all the time, you know? Yeah. Like, well, look, look at it, the, 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 the turtles Christmas covers are a tradition that goes, you know, way back to the early days, these guys have always been doing um, Christmas covers every, every year. And, and, you know, you can do a Google search and look back and you'll find lots and lots of different versions of the, the, the Christmas cover, you know? Yeah. And so I'm, I'm absolutely honored to be able to contribute to it. I, I, I think, um, you know, to that tradition and um, going back to what we were talking about earlier with the, with those volumes of the, turtles those um watercolored ones that i was talking about the bigger books i'm not sure if they have a collective name or something but uh book four was the one that the ninja turtles movie was actually based on i believe Mm -hmm. it was loosely based on that storyline and um it i i think that story takes place during christmas doesn't it where they're setting up the right they're setting up the tree you know and and then all of a sudden leo crashes through the window and there's an early yeah. story around that. I think it's around the same time. I don't. I forget what the actual publishing year was, but there's a Michelangelo story around that time too. That's a right. Christmas story where. So it, yeah. there, it goes back. Wait, it goes way back. The Turtles and Christmas, and I, I, I it does. I, I still am waiting for my Ninja Turtles uh, uh, Christmas toys. It's never. I want <laughs> Turtles with a little Santa hat or something. I've been waiting for Playmates. <laughs> I'm hoping Neca will. But I, since the beginning, I'm like, where the hell are my Santa Turtles? <laughs> No, you, we're we're going to have to find a, a, some kind of a little elf or something, Christmas decoration that has those hats made and just rip them off their head and put them on your turtle yeah. toys or something. <laughs> <laughs> That's the way to do it. Get get a little uh, mini Cosby sweater. I mean, Christmas sweater. What am I talking about? <laughs> a Christmas sweater. Knit it up for them. The um, Let me ask you, go and, you know, you've done so much animated adventures and then, and then doing this and and others in this style, is it hard to remember to go to three toes to two toes? <laughs> uh, I didn't even, I don't, I, yeah, I, I didn't I put too much thought into that, but <laughs> I'm, I'm glad, I, I'm glad I got it right. Uh, there, there was one instance where I did a, an, a, another sort of style that I dabbled in quite a bit that people seem to like is the, the chibi style, which is, um, you know, this sort of little tiny animated cartoony version, but they're almost childlike. Um, but uh, it's oh, yeah. not a baby version, if you know what I mean. It's it's yeah, sort of a Japanese tradition and stuff of that, right? Yeah, I, I made some uh, I made some team into chibi stickers, which uh, are available out there. But anyway, uh, <laughs> 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 um, but there was one time. So so with those chibis, I, I tend to give them three fingers and a thumb, uh, rather than you know a normal five fingered hand. So four fingers. But with a turtle, it doesn't work because they've got three fingers. And, right. And yeah. I actually, th- there was one drawing that I did where I gave them the four fingers and just without even thinking about it. And I think somebody pointed it out as they do on the internet, you know. Oh, my God. Are you kidding me? They'll, they'll, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got to remember not to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, they were on to me. But, um, yeah, look, I, I I mean, I've grown up with the, the two toad turtles. So, I, I, I honestly, I would love to... I want to do more of um, this version of the Turtles, the IDW series, uh, what I call the big boy Turtles, the comic books. That's my passion. That's where it belongs. And I mean, as a just as an example, you know, working on a, a script written by Sophie and, um, you know, with my artwork, something like that would be something that I think would work really well. And I, I hope I get that opportunity down the line, you know, once my schedule frees up. But it's something that I would love to pursue. Um, or another another option that we've sort of toyed around with is uh, myself doing the pencils and Freddie doing his ink wash kind of style over the top of my work, which we've collaborated a few times. Oh, that's cool. Um, I, have out. I had Freddie on here and his artwork is, holy shit, it's so Right, you do, yeah, yeah. It's an interesting yeah, thing. you, you, you got to see what he does with my pencils, man. Like, I was just, it's such a weird, like, those are two very distinct styles. I'm so <laughs> curious. Cool. Yeah, uh, if, you, if you just scroll through my Instagram, you'll see... Um, just look for the really cool turtles art and you'll see the stuff that Freddie and I have done together. And <laughs> Oh, cool. That's awesome. Yeah. It's, it, uh, you can see, it, it's cool. Cause you can see both of us in there, you know, it's that's cool. I, 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 I have to check it out because it, I, I know both your styles now pretty well. And I, I can't, I can't fathom what that would 
what baby that would make. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, we think we it, that'd be a, a dream project again if we got to do some kind of a one shot or something where we got to work in that sort of style. It would be definitely really cool. You know, my last question for you because I usually hit everybody with the uh, the what's your favorite turtle question. Um, do you have a favorite yeah. eye character to draw for? Like, I loved your Mondo. Like I, I could, I could watch, I could read just a series of your Mondo Gecko from that little eight pages. But I mean, <laughs> side character that you really like to draw the turtles. Uh, so you keep you keep cutting out on that bit oh, where uh, do you have a favorite like um, do you have a favorite side character of the turtles that you side, like? Side okay. I, I kept hearing eye character and I'm going. What oh my god, no, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, yes, Joe eye Ball. character. <laughs> I think uh, I think my favorite. I mean, Rocksteady and Bebop are, are just such cool designs and characters, and the idea of them, you know, drawing a rhino and a warthog, they're they're just very fun animals. So, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I I mean, I've drawn them. I drew the 2012 versions a little bit, and I've probably drawn the 80s versions a little bit here and there, but never never really seriously as as an adult. So um, yeah, they're they're pretty cool. I, I, I wouldn't mind, you know. I mean, I know that they've already done a few one shots with them, and they were executed really well. Um, I think Ben Bates did the artwork on those, and and his stuff is really fantastic as well. So I really enjoy those um, series that they did. But um, yeah, I don't know. I don't know who else. I would really. I think uh, that you've drawn a lot of like like you love to draw. A certain one or is there anybody like that that you find yourself doing commissions of more or you just like this any of the other side characters that you have to latch on to yeah not not particularly i mean i've, I've drawn i've drawn krang a, a handful of times and sure. shredder as well I've, I've been asked to draw mondo in commissions a, a number of times but for the most part i think people just want the the core turtles themselves sure, yeah. that's the by far the major you know request that i get and and all different iterations of them. Uh, one thing that I have found that is very, very interesting among the Turtle fans and um, not not as much of the fandom is reading the comic books as I think probably should, especially given how good the IDW comics are at the oh moment God, yeah. and how good that storyline has been. And so by far and away, any time that you post any artwork that features Jenica on there, it's just questions uh, galore. Oh, who, who's the fifth turtle? Who's the yellow turtle? Is there five sure. turtles now? I didn't know this, you know, blah, 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 blah. And, oh, you know, they're just trying to do a cash grab and, you know, all this kind of stuff that you hear. And it's like, guys, like, um, this is a, it, you know, this is a character that's been embraced by the fandom. Oh, yeah. Uh, it's been very it's well great. executed. And, it, you know, we, we, we need, um, it's really cool that they've done this and evolved things that little bit and, I think, uh, I, I don't know what's going to happen with that character, you know, in the future, is she going to stick around or not or whatever it might be. But, um, you know, this this Christmas cover is commemorating that moment in time. This is 2020 and Jenica has been with us now for a year. So she's part of the family. She belongs um, on this piece, I, you know. And that, that's uh, I, I, I did answer a few people when they were asking the questions and, I you know, I think I did it nicely and politely as I, as I always try to interact with people. Yeah, <laughs> sure. Um, but you want to say, it, read the it, damn it, comic book because she's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> you kind of think I mean, that a little bit. Here's the weird thing too, like the hypocrisy of it. There have been 10 fifth turtles. Mm. Flash, there's Is that right? There's so many other turtles that have come into the mix. And because, I mean, partly it's probably because, um, because, uh, Venus was rough because not because Venus did anything wrong, but because that that live action show because Next Mutation was so terrible. But like yeah, yeah. since having a female turtle, but there's been extra turtles all the time. So yeah, yeah. So what? So was was Venus the first one? Venus was the first female character. No, not the first fifth turtle. I think Slash came be Slash came before her. And a few. Oh, okay, yeah, okay. She was but the Slash. female turtle, the first female turtle in uh, and she was put in that Next Mutation show that was. Yeah, uh, very bad. If, if I recall, the actual design of her didn't she kind of have um, like turtle shell boobs? She did have turtle boobs. Yes, yes. <laughs> so that's uh, that's kind of that's. What I, I always feel weird seeing boobs on like um, you know dinosaurs or reptilian style creatures. You know, it's it's a little bit explain weird. This, <laughs> explain the biology of her boobs. <laughs> 
end of that note, I think turtle boobs are as good as a place to end. <laughs> <As anyone. laughs> On that note, yes. John, thank you for talking to me. It's great. And uh, I'm going to get this episode up right away because, again, this Christmas cover is is awesome. And as as is so much you, so much of your work that I've seen, it's, it's just great. So thank you for talking to me. And it was really a huge treat. Thank you. Thank you. Look, my, my pleasure, Brian. It's um, been very nice to meet you and um, really awesome to be able to, you know, connect with the, the fans in this sort of a way. And, you know, I'm all the way out here in Australia, so it's nice to be able to talk to everybody all over the world. And I'm sure, you know, all the people that listen to your show and, um, you know, a, a big shout out to Shellheads United for the opportunity and for reaching out to me to, to do that cover. And, um, yeah, look, if you guys, if you guys like what you see, you know, go and go and grab yourself a copy of it. Yeah, and I mean, check out your website too, all that stuff. Cause, and your Instagram, I, I follow your Instagram feed. There's some awesome turtles out there. I do love the stickers and stuff. So like, it's all good stuff, man. It's, it's, I encourage any turtles fan, especially those who are into that, like that fun part of the turtles, which I love. So. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Very cool. Thanks so much, man. Take care. Well, dude, no worries. Like you too. Okay. Its way. And now it's time for one of my all time favorite Christmas songs. And you kids can sing along! Grab a slice, let's kick it! We wish you a turtle's Christmas We wish you a turtle's Christmas We wish you a turtle's Christmas And a happy new year Merry Christmas From Michelangelo Raphael Okay.